Hello everybody, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Uh, thank you for joining me for some Origins interviews. I'm sitting here uh, right now with Rob Davio. No, nope, I said it wrong. It was feel, really close, it was really like, close. It was Davio and it's yeah, Davio, but we'll let it go. You just gotta uh, right, more pretentious. Yeah. I just know so many Daves and I really wanted to put like the I, Dave version in the, yeah, da, the Dave. Da, yeah, da, very fancy. Yeah, yeah. yeah Davio. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you yeah. so much for joining me yeah. here uh, today. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Rob has designed a ton of board games for a ton of years, a lot of very beloved games. Mm -hmm. So my first question to you is, do you have a personal favorite game that you've designed? Boy, is that impossible to pick a baby? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. Yeah. yeah um, uh, it, well, Pandemic Legacy has been my most successful game, so yeah. it has a soft spot. That's like the, the, the kid who grew up and did really well and made you proud. Yeah, but yeah. Oddly enough, when Matt and I designed it, it wasn't. It was not that hard to design. It was like, how about this? How about this? How yeah. about that? Like it was, wow. it was one just of the a smooth process. Smooth process. Yeah. I think the game that I've had, it's a two-parter, had the most uh, fun design was working on the original Betrayal. Okay. Which I wasn't the inventor, but I spent about a year and a half, two years at Hasbro turning it yeah, into the yeah. game it is, and then Betrayal Legacy, nice. because that was the child where you're like. Okay, it's betrayal and it's legacy. Everything could go wrong. Yeah, yeah. And managing to managing to get something to come together, I was like, this this just kind of works. This yeah, is kind of yeah, fun. Yeah. I mean, if you don't like betrayal or legacy, it's not going to work for you. But if you like both, I'm like, I think we did something cool. <laughs> nice. Well, those are. Uh, it, it's interesting that you bring up both of those because I think both of those games are games that have broken out of the hobby market, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'll be at a party just with normal people and someone will be like, oh, you like board games? Have you played Pandemic? And I'm like, yeah, how have you played Pandemic? You know? I, I, yeah, well, I didn't do <laughs> Pandemic, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, no, Pandemic, yeah, they have a lot of things that are broken. My what, what do you think with like Betrayal and Pandemic Legacy and th games like that, what do you think, because those started in the hobby world but now have sort of grown beyond the hobby world yeah. where normal people that don't know a lot about board games have played those. Those are two examples I hear about right. from a lot of people. What do you think made those games sort of break out of the hobby world? Me? Yeah? I, mean, yeah. Actually, I was, yeah. I was uh, <laughs> wait, we gotta brush your shoulders off a little bit here. Well, I was, like, I was like, oh no, this is a very dangerous answer without context. Uh, when I was working- Well, good for you, I like danger. Yes, yeah. Yeah. it was a very dangerous environment uh -huh. here with the fake yeah. uh -huh. succulents. Yeah. Um, when I was at Hasbro um, working on Betrayal, we were sort of turning Avalon Hill from where it had been into something that was a little bit more the next step after you're ready for Beyond Risk or Monopoly. Yeah, we yeah. wanted it to be, oh, this isn't that much. We thought yeah, that it yeah. was going to be very complicated, but it's just that, that entry-level gateway game into more complex games. So part of what I was doing on Betrayal was taking a very good game that was much more hobby based and trying to get it to be mm. accessible to people and even kids for yeah, the first yeah. time. And, um, and then with Pandemic Legacy, the idea, that one, I don't know how that one broke out because that's actually, <laughs> my brother tried well, to like, play Legacy it. Legacy games aren't simple, right? No. There's like a whole process They're, they're not simple. That you one, gotta bring that people one, back. And, yeah, I think that know, one, like, uh, I don't know. I'm going to take me out of that one. That one was just, <laughs> who knows what happened there? Yeah, because yeah. my brother is not a big board gamer, wanted to play his brother's most successful game. And yeah. he played Pandemic a couple times, and I would get texts about Pandemic Legacy. And it was like, so many questions about January. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. they just <laughs> stopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, do people play this? And you're like, uh, yes, a lot of people. I said yes. It's, it's like, quite popular. <laughs> it's like you picked up a guitar, learned three chords, and then tried to join a jazz band. Like yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. you skipped a lot of steps in there yeah. to play it. So thank you all the people who play <laughs> Pandemic Legacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, we tried to make it as friendly as possible, but you do need a certain knowledge. Yeah, for sure. So then, you know, you've been in the board game world for a long time, working mm -hmm. on different mm -hmm. games. What was the inspiration for starting Restoration Games about five years ago? Uh, I was asked. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> my partner, nice. Justin Jacobson, who was and still is to some extent my lawyer, yeah. uh, wanted to start a game publisher. And I knew him. He's like, I want to start a game publisher, and I want you to be like the partner creative director. And I said... No, <laughs> there, there's no, the world does not need another publisher. He goes, wait, what if we only take games that are out of print, and restore them and bring them back in? And I went, that is great. I love yeah. it because I can keep doing my own stuff. 
we can do this. And he asked me, because of my time in Hasbro, I was constantly taking, how do we make Clue modern? How do we take yeah, risks? Yeah. Like, so looking at a game and saying, this is where it was, but how could it be cooler or different or modern? Yeah. I don't know how I did it. That's my career. Nice. And so there's obviously a lot of games from the 70s, 80s, 90s mm, yeah. that could be redone. Yeah. How do you pick the ones that you actually want to do that you want to remake? That's a lot of drinking. <laughs> he doesn't, Justin doesn't even drink. Um, <laughs> we do have a, if you go to restorationgames.com, we say, what would you like to see? And then we spits it into a oh. spreadsheet and we look at it from, from time to time. Um, and some, there's like a top tier. And yeah, Fireball yeah. Island was on there, and Dark Tower was on there, yeah, and yeah. Thunder Road was up there. So we're trying to hit the top tier, and then we look at the next year. If, if, if one person picks a game, actually, sometimes no one picks a game. We did, redid a game called Epic Duels, which actually I had worked on with Craig Van Ness at Hasbro. It became the unmatched line, and it's our most popular yeah, line yeah. ever. So sometimes it's just looking at it and saying, yeah. I think uh, this game will fit now. Um, and then the question, do we have the rights? Do we have a good idea? How much time will it take? Because ideally, we want to take a game and change 20 to 25 percent. Yeah. And we always get carried away, like Return to Dark Tower. <laughs> Had a tower, start over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and Isaac Childress signed on for like two years to do design and then left like a third of the way through the project. Oh, wow. it took, well, not like in an angry huff. Yeah, it's yeah, like, just like. <laughs> I got Frosthaven yeah, and Jaws yeah. are like, I gave you two years. Like, okay, see ya. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then he sees the game now, I think he's like, where did this go? Like, you know, um, we I always, was not expecting this. Yeah, yeah. you know, we, we got, we check in once in a while, like, so yeah, we kind of yeah. did this. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just like, I'm fluffing a money pillow, I can't hear you. How often with, with the sort of restoring old games do you go down a path and you're like, oh, that was the wrong path to go to, like, that didn't work? Or Every, every, right? every damn time. Really? Every, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, usually, you know, what we want to save. Right, like, oh, yeah. you know, this is sort of the DNA of the game and we talk to people who are big fans, like, what do you remember? What do you recall? What mm. needs to be in there to make it feel like this? And then we start building a game around it. And then we say, okay, we still had a good idea and we did all the wrong things, but now yeah, we know yeah. all the wrong things. Yeah. Let's go back almost to start. And then almost always at that point, you can do something pretty fast and clean because you've already done the bad idea. Sometimes we get lucky or stubborn. Yeah, yeah and we yeah, take yeah. that bad idea a lot longer than it should be before someone, most of the time, me goes, "I'm not having fun." Yeah, and we're yeah. Like, oh no! But we spent six months. It's like yes, and it's not fun. Yeah, bummer. I, you know, when you work on nostalgia, mm -hmm. it's a it's a delicate balance, right? Yeah. Because people have a lot of emotions wrapped up. Yeah. in stuff from their childhood and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of navigate that like, okay, well, we, like a new IP, you're not gonna have people sending e angry emails yeah. about, right? Well, uh, no, they, come fair. On. you've been on people the internet. People are very angry. You've been on the yes, internet. That yes, is okay. true, that people find a way to be angry. I'm just, I can't believe people still say angry letters. Like you did the whole time to write out something and put an uh, envelope yeah, no, and Justin, put a stamp on Justin it. Justin would get and, that, I don't. Yeah. Do you, is that something you consider when you're when you're yeah, doing we, these? You have to consider it, but you can't be enslaved by it. And sometimes yeah. you can miss the mark. But that's why we try to talk to people and say, like, sometimes you have to fight for really strange things. Like, no, mm. this part is important. Uh, like in uh, Thunder Road, the chopper. Yeah. A little helicopter with a rotor that spins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> took forever to find out how to make it work in this game. Yeah, yeah. We kept saying, we don't need a chopper, or the chopper is just a card. It doesn't have to be on the board. It's just taking up space, and it, we have to yeah. design the piece so you can put a car underneath it. And then we'd go talk to Thunder Road people, like, what if the chopper wasn't on the board with a spinning rotor? They're like, then it's not Thunder Road. And we're yeah. like, <laughs> fair enough. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so there was a lot of time Good of, note. <laughs> make the rotor bigger, make the chopper at an angle, yeah, call it yeah. a chopper, not a helicopter. Like, there were these little things that because I played Thunder Road, but I wasn't like a big nostalgia person. Yeah, so yeah. we usually have a unofficial group of three to 10 people we can go back to yeah, and yeah. say, how does this feel? And they're like, that, that feels like what I remember. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, good, nice. good. Now they won't represent everyone, yeah, but yeah. We're, we try. Yeah, that's great. And I would say, you know, I've played a lot of your games and I would say that 
for me, when I think about like, how is this game different from the original, a lot of what it is is mitigating luck, right? The original game had so much luck in it. Yeah. Now you've built in ways to like, yes, there are still fun volcano balls coming down, yeah. but there's also things I can do to mitigate yeah. what's happening. Has that ever been on like a whiteboard somewhere? Like we, we're gonna figure out ways to like mitigate the luck in this old game. No, it's sort of imp- I mean, I yeah. start, I've been saying something the past week, and it feels like you know, I'm always, oh, I've got great insights now <laughs> that I've done this a, a million years. Yeah. Which is, I think, the games that have been the most successful are so as we take a game of any complexity yeah. and add, I like to say, add plus two to the complexity. Mm. Right? So Fireball Island was not that complex. Yeah, yeah. But we added plus two, yeah. which means it's still a lot more luck-based and silly than even the old version of Thunder Road or yeah, yeah. something like that. If we made um, Fireball Island highly strategic, it doesn't feel like Fireball Island. If yeah, we yeah, kept yeah. it right where it was, it's like, oh, this was better when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're already fighting against people I'll see you know, online. They'll say, oh, I got Return to Dark Tower. The tower's cool. It's not as big as when I was a kid. And I have a picture of <laughs> the original tower is 10 inches. Ours is 14, wow. and I have them with You me. just happened to be smaller yeah. when you were a kid. Yeah, you were like, and you asked <laughs> The perspective was different. Thunder <laughs> Road, it's yeah. like, uh, not Thunder Road, Fireball Island. I'm like, yeah. how, how big do you think the island was? They're like, I, a, a dining room table, a ping pong table? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, ours is a little narrower, but taller. They're like, no. Yeah, it can't be. That can't yeah. be. I'm like, you're looking over a table like this. <laughs> yeah, that's so Your funny. brain hadn't formed. So yeah, we're... I, we often say we like to make it as good as you remember, yeah. not as good as it was. Oh, that's a good if, way to if do If you it. just put it out like exactly yeah. what it was, people go, oh. Oh, yeah, this wasn't as good yeah. as I, I mean, remember. some people will yeah. just love it. We get that sometimes about Dark Tower. It's like, I play it once a year. I played it since once a year. It's like, well, you never, it never faded for you. It's been yeah, a constant. Yeah. And that's yeah. great. But a lot of people played it and it went away. And if they played it now, they go, oh. Yeah, 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 I've grown up. So we want the game to grow mm. up, but still scratch that same itch. And yeah, you don't want it to be like a movie from your childhood where you rewatch it as an adult and you're like, oh, I don't know that, what I was thinking. That did not hold up. That <laughs> yeah, did not hold that up. You know, but all it's, the time. it's the same thing that, um, and um, really, let me just crack this horrible nightmare of <laughs> Star Wars nostalgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was 7, 10, and 13 when the original trilogy came out. And yeah. a lot of what has come out since is like, does nothing. Yeah. Right? I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I started watching Obi-Wan a couple weeks ago, mm. and I was like, ah, ah, yeah, I'm yeah. 10 again. Yeah. Ah. And I've discovered for me, I want it to be right around Star Wars or Empire Strikes Back, and I want it to have as most Jedi as possible. Yeah. And that works for me. All right. Right? But yeah. it's like, doesn't mean the other ones are bad or wrong yeah, 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 or yeah. something like that. It's like, this little tiny <laughs> section, <laughs> you know, makes me playing with action figures and listening to the 45 of the soundtrack, but yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. me. So. No matter how hard we try, some people are going to say, you missed. Yeah, that's fair. And you just try to please the people that are liking what you're doing and sort of right. not worrying about all that chat. I mean, that's how the internet works too, right? I mean, no matter what clip of stand-up I put up, uh, I'll have 100 people be like, man, this was so hilarious. And the one person is like, you should probably go die, you know? Yeah, <laughs> which like, is... Wow, um, that's, ex- that's extreme. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it happens all Maybe the time. Maybe they're just doing dark comedy? Yeah, no, yeah, no, they I just wish. want you to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that's the thing. You you forget yeah. the hundred handshakes and remember the one slap. And, For sure. And that's true of anything. Like, I'll yeah. see all these people praise the game, then one person's like, I've pooped mo- more coherent <laughs> games. And you go, oh. did, we, did we not work on this enough? Yeah. Did we not no, like, I what it. It was like, yeah. and then you go, that was real. Uh, although a well-crafted takedown of a game. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of like. Props, well, to, props to you for like really... It's the same with comedy. Like if someone yells out like you suck, I'm like, come on, man. Like that's Put just some a, effort. But then if like every once in a while I'll get a great like heckle and I'm like, oh, that's just really... I had a woman come up to me after a show like two weeks ago and she came up and she was holding a cocktail and she was like, I'll remember this cocktail more than I remember your jokes. And then walked away and I was like... That was a pretty sweet bird. That's a pretty sweet bird because it probably <laughs> wasn't even a good cocktail. Yeah, I know. You know. I was like, all right, I'll hand it to you. That was pretty. That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No credit uh, to her. Yep. Yeah. Do you have any plans to redo Mousetrap? No. Can I pay you to redo Mousetrap? You can pay me anything you want. I'm not redoing Mousetrap. All right. Trap. Well, no, hold know, on. Look at I want to make sure you heard the second half. Yeah, nope. That, that big comedy money. What I hear is I've got sixty dollars. 
to redo Mousetrap and make it work. I will right? take your $60 <laughs> and not do Mousetrap, but I will right. buy a memorable cocktail with it. All right, that's fair. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining me here. Okay. Rob Davio, check out Restoration Games' booth here at Origins. Yeah, thanks so much thank for you. taking the time. Yeah, can I take? Yeah, okay. yeah that's yours. Real yeah. Uh huh. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs>